Okay, so what we're going to talk about right now is uh, is the components of each um, or the components of the complete triaxial test. We're going to start up uh, what the ELE equipment is is uh, is is different uh, different types of equipment that work together in conjunction to generate the uh, triaxial system, and uh, we're going to do a brief overview of what each item is and how what they op, what they do what they uh, what they serve what purpose they serve to the to, to the triaxial testing for ELE. Um, the first piece of equipment we'll talk about is uh, something called the Triplex 2 um, master control panel. This is the panel that um, is designed to uh, be a, a hub, if you will, a communication hub of all of the supply lines uh, as far as air, water, vacuum, and drainage um, can feed into the one, one location and then uh, expel that, the, the appropriate water and pressure to the sample for the testing. So in the back of this machine, which we won't show you right now, there is a uh, there are inputs uh, for each of those uh, supplies um, that feed into the back of the system that are then tubed or plumbed to the proper location. Um, and uh, then, um, then it's designed to, uh, uh, like I've already mentioned, uh, produce the proper amount of water and, and pressure from that supply line. Um, we'll start off by, by talking about how to turn this on and operate it briefly. Uh, the first thing we want to do is turn our uh, pressure meter, our digital pressure meter on. Now this pressure meter is uh, attached to a pressure transducer that is installed right behind here uh, and used for um, uh, to get ourselves in the ballpark range for the pressure that we need for the portion of the test that we're testing. Um, the only real button we need to worry about here is the tear button, which is the center button. We can tear that and it looks like it's just a little bit off. We're reading about half of PSI. This is a PSI meter. This is not KPA. So uh, uh, you can you can buy them in KPA, but uh, it would require a wiring a wiring change, which um, and then a recalibration uh, at the factory. This can be removed if you'd like that, but we'll keep it in PSI. Okay. Um, uh, the instruction manual mentions that we want to turn this on 15 to 20 minutes prior to any testing for accurate results. Uh, let the electronics warm up, that sort of thing. Uh, fortunate for, fortunately for us, we're not going to use this except for to get us in the ballpark range um, because the transducers uh, at the cell location are the ones we're going to use for actual testing. Those are the ones we need accurate. Uh, this is accurate, it is calibrated, it is uh, traceable, but it's only going to be used for ballpark leak um, because we have other transducers more close to, this, to the sample, which we'll talk about later. So for, we turn that on. The next thing we do is uh, supply input supply line or supply pressure air pressure from the uh, whatever system you have. Here it's just line pressure that we have uh, um, coming in from the back of the, uh, from the, from the supplies on the, on the bench tops here. Um, the system itself can handle up to 150 PSI, so that's the maximum pressure input. Um, typically in triaxial testing, uh, you shouldn't need that much pressure. Um, so we're going to um, uh, I think we have it about 120 psi, pretty consistent in this lab too. But I will, what I will mention here is, um, you don't need to to have 120 psi coming into the system. What you need to have though is about 10 to 15 psi higher than your maximum amount of pressure that you need for testing. So if you only need 50 psi maximum, you only need to put in 60 or 70 psi just to make sure you have enough pressure to, to complete your test. Okay. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and the way to, to input the pressure is this something called the master regulator, which is this regulator right here. Uh, this is your uh, pressure supply coming in. This is the master supply coming in that will feed all pressure to everything to the system. So as I mentioned before, you want this to be a little bit higher than what you actually need for your testing. Okay? So we will go ahead and turn the regulator until we get pressure coming in. Sorry, I made a mistake here. First thing we want to do is turn on the pressure to the system, which I turned off last night, which is over here. As a safety precaution. While I'm over here, I'll turn the water on as well. Now we'll turn the regulator on. And we'll put it up to about 
100 PSI. Again, we shouldn't need that much, but we'll just do that anyway. Um, so that's the next thing you do. You want to go ahead and get the, the amount of pressure, the air pressure that you need for your testing. Okay, so um, uh, we'll stay on this side of the panel here and we'll talk about the vacuum supply line. Uh, what we have here is, uh, is, is a, a dial uh, that's telling us the amount of, um, of pull of vacuum that we have coming into the system. Now this, this is line pressure or line pull negative pressure vacuum from uh, the actual, uh, from the lab here. And it's only reading about, right now, it's only about 18 inches of mercury or pull, or about, uh, uh, oh, what is it, about uh, point, uh, about point six uh, bar, which is not great. Um, ideally, it would be best if you had about 28 to 29 inches of mercury coming in. Um, and I've recommended here that uh, you may want to get a portable vacuum pump to, to supply that, that vacuum into the system. The, the purpose of the vacuum to this uh, system is to remove air from the water that we're going to use for saturation of the samples. Um, the, the point of saturation is to remove air from the void space within the sample, or with the, between the soil particles, and if you have um, a considerable amount of air in the water that you're, you have, that you're inputting into the sample, then you're defeating your purpose. So you want to remove as much air as possible from the water before you in, infiltrate that into the pore space of the sample. Okay, so we're going to use vacuum to remove the air. You can also boil water. Of course, you want to get it back down to temperature, but the vacuum is uh, about the quickest way if you have the right vacuum supply, which here we, do, we really don't. Okay, so that's your, that's, those are your inputs. The last input uh, that we really have coming in is just water, and we have water coming in. I've turned it on, and it's just tap water that we have coming into the system. Um, I've been told that uh, using... Um, uh, distilled water uh, will eventually eat away at some of the items, the, the aluminum uh, that, that's, that's used in some of the fittings of this. So regular tap water is okay. It will eventually corrode, so you want to make sure you stay on top of cleaning maintenance. Don't let water sit for a long period of time between tests. Okay, okay so um, uh, the next thing we'll talk about here is this, uh, this valve here. But this valve is, is going to control something that happens outside the panel, which is this device right here, or this tank right here, which is called the De-airing water tank, okay? This tank is designed to uh, take the water coming in from the tap, which I've already filled it up to about an inch below the top, and then allows us to put a vacuum on it to remove as much air as possible from that water prior to putting it into our sample. Um, so I've used, uh, I've already filled it up, but I can show you how to fill it up again. But uh, real quick, we'll talk about the fact that this has a 10 PSI pop valve on the top of it. It also has two lines coming in. One is a supply line that supplies a, uh, whatever supply, either vacuum or pressure or water, to the top of the container. The other one is just a line that's actually a feed line, meaning if you put pressure on top of this water plenum, it'll force water out and into this line and then back into the sand, back into the panel. We'll, we'll show you that in a little bit. And then this pop valve is just used for really maintenance between stages, whether we fill it, vacuum, or supply pressure. In between those stages, we want to equalize it or come to an equilibrium state. Okay? Everything that happens through this tube right here or the top of the water column is controlled by this de-airing water control valve. This is a four-way valve that allows us to supply those lines to the, to the water column itself, okay? So the first thing we want to look at, right now we keep it at vent, and if you notice, we're storing all of our valves at vent. Vent just means that, uh, regular atmospheric pressure that we experience right now. And I can, list, I can lift the top pop valve of the uh, gearing tank and notice I don't hear anything, it's equalized, okay? But if I take this valve and push it to down, you'll notice that the tank is being filled with water. Okay? And I want to stop that because I, do, I want to make sure I don't fill it up more than about an inch um, below the top, of the, the top of the lid because we have to have some sort of room in there to supply a vacuum, that sort of thing, uh, and pressure. So we want to make sure we only fill it up to about that high, and I, I can label that as well. Okay, next thing we want to do after we fill the tank up 
is to take this over to vacuum. And what that did was, it allowed us to put a vacuum on this water plenum here, and then eventually vacuum the entire water column. Now I've left this overnight, this in a vacuum state overnight, so there shouldn't be a whole lot of air. You can see at the very bottom there are some air bubbles in there. Um, that if we had a little bit higher, more pull, we could get all of those bubbles out. Now the manual talks that uh, if you have 28 to 29 inches of uh, mercury pull on the vacuum supply, you should uh, you should allow this to sit for about 45 minutes to an hour under vacuum to try and get as much air out as possible. Um, with this, this we're only about 20 and a half inches. Um, we're not going to get. If you notice, we we don't even see any any air coming to the top. So uh, that's why I left it on overnight, and also it's the reason why we're, I'm recommending that they get a, a better pump from here because we're really not getting all of the air out of the out of the water. But typically, you would let this run for about 45 minutes to an hour. You can uh, tap the side of it slightly because air, air bubbles like to stick to either the tube or the side of the, of the container. So you can tap it slightly and let them lift up and then evacuate out. Um, um, but uh, you don't want to tap it too hard or you create turbulence at the top and then you're just generating air into your water. You want to avoid that. Okay. So we have it on vacuum now and obviously I don't see much happening there. So um, I'm assuming that it's, it's evacuated as much, as much as we can. So I'm going to get it, put it back to vent, equalize it, lifting the pop valve, and we're back to, we're back to where we are. Now the next step uh, we can talk about here is um, the, the, the right side or the burette portion of the triplex panel. Because we have to take this water and we have to use this water to go into our sample for saturation and for confining pressure of sigma three during your triaxial test. So what we wanna do next is talk about each burette. Now, uh, when, I, when I teach this, I like to tell everybody that we, this looks very complicated. A lot of valves and knobs and all of that, but it's really not that complicated if you think of it very simply. Uh, first of all, we're we're not we're not done with this portion of it, but we have our master regulator set, we have our vacuum supply set, so these are pretty much done. We will talk about the deairing control valve one more time here in a minute. But if we uh, if we want to simplify things a little bit, um, what we want to do is talk about each burette. There are three of them here. But if you notice, we can start with the top and work our way down. Everything starts from here and works our way down to an output tube at the bottom. Okay? So these are all individualized three burettes that supply water pressure to one specific location. Okay? And we start up with the top. These, the first thing we do is the display pressure, which is the switch, uh, that will allow us to monitor the amount of pressure that's going into the top of the water plenum of this burette um, based upon what we do with our regulator. Okay? Uh, one, only one of these switches can be up at the same time. And to expand this unit, uh, we have uh, auxiliary panels with six additional uh, burettes and you can have up to two of those. So you can have up to 15 burettes in one system. But you still can only have one of these pressure display switches up at a time for it to read appropriately onto the display. So this switch reads what's going to happen to this, uh, the amount of pressure that's going into here on that display line right there, okay? So for instance, if we uh, want to put, for an example, if we want to put 10 PSI out to this tube, to wherever we're going with it, we would flip the switch up, we would turn our regulator until our, until our pressure meter read 10. Okay, so we have 10 PSI at the regulator, but it stopped right here at this four-way valve. Okay, so this valve here is still at vent. But what we want to do is turn this valve up to pressure. And now what we've done is supplied that 10 PSI to the top of this water column. 
down through the, through, through the column, inside the panel, we have a switch here that is pointed up to cell operate. What that means is that it's operating the cell out through this valve here, or this, uh, I guess this quick disconnect, out to this tube, all the way to our input, and this is our cell pressure line. If you notice cell pressure here, and then cell pressure right here. This tube is, is running where that is. Okay? Okay. Okay. So. Wait. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. You just go like this, so we know that the sequence changed. Okay. That's it. Uh, do you want to run continuously all the way through? Or do you want to take stops a little bit? Do you want us to, like, like one camera zooming in on equipment while one camera is dedicated to Eric? Yeah. That's, that's what, what we're that doing. one we're zooming is in and zooming out. into the equipment, yeah. and this one has to Basically. zoom into Eric. Okay. But there may be instances where Eric. Yeah, yeah. Is, it's okay. I could mix them then. Okay. So if you're yeah. shooting Eric, I should shoot the instrumentation. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then go we'll reverse if yeah. I'm shooting our yeah. I prefer to keep that only for instrumentation, this one for Eric, because this one is an HD high definition. That one is uh, Radio digital. Super 8, yeah, uh, digital 8. And uh, that's also digital, but it's a digital 8. Right. So that will zoom into the all right, so I'll, I'll use this. When when Eric is talking to you, I'll yeah. use this to zoom into the equipment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm almost done with the panel. Okay. I'm almost done. So, you have another conclusion on that, right? Or no? Yeah, we have some more to do. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. All right, what I failed to mention is how do we get this water out to this tube? How do we get water into here to put it out to the tube? So we'll do this with this burette here. And the way to do that is to first supply pressure to the de-airing tank valve. Move that valve to pressure. And now what we have, notice the, PS, the pop valve, we have about 10 PSI on the top of this water column. And then you have this, cell, this, uh, this valve at the bottom of this, which allows us to fill or drain this burette. We'll go ahead and turn this to the left, which is filled. And if you notice, that water comes in from there into here. You notice there are air bubbles as well. Typically what we want to do is not open it fully, open it very slow, and allow the water to come in slowly to not generate air bubbles, which I just did. But I did that on purpose, because what we also want to do then is, now that we've filled it up, we only want to fill this to about an inch uh, from the top maybe an inch and a half from the top, and then we want to keep it uh, going lower than this when we use the water down, okay? Um, but what I also, the reason I created some air bubbles in here is because I also, if you notice this valve here, each one of these can also be, you can supply a vacuum to it. Let me take the tube out, and then I can push this valve to down, and it can supply vacuum to each burette individually if need be, okay? So if you do get water in, or air in here, like I just did, I can have that evacuated out as well, similar to what we did over here. And we recommend that you do this for, again, half hour to 45 minutes prior to any testing. In here, after you do it in here. So de-air the water here first for 45 minutes to an hour. Take that water, put it into the burettes. Again, de-air it for a half hour to 45 minutes before you begin testing. Okay? And if, if you'll look real close, you can see some air particles moving up. 